All right, let's take a look at Dexter Lawrence. Justin, he's six foot four, three hundred and forty-two pounds, twenty-two years old, coming off of his rookie year where he was the seventeenth overall pick in the first round. Obviously, a part of the Odell Beckham Jr. trade with Jabril Peppers, the third round pick that ended up being O'Shane Zimenez and Dexter Lawrence. Justin, Lawrence had some highs and some mediums in his rookie year. There was really no lows, um, but they're also like. There, the Tampa game you got super excited about, but besides that, I don't remember myself like jumping for joy for Dexter Lawrence. What do you got on the cat? Well, I think that comes with the position, Bobby, which I don't even know if I want to get into that whole conversation. It's a good thing that we have a lot of defensive tackles, but um, what I have in terms of fun facts about Dexter Lawrence, crazy that he's 22. I'm 22. I'm older than Dexter Lawrence. Let that sink in. What am I doing with my life besides talking about the Giants? In high school, Bobby, he was 340 pounds, supposedly. This is what I need to, we need to, we need to point this out. He's only two pounds like heavier right now than he was in high school as an 18 year old graduating high school, 340 pounds. And he ran a five second 40. That's crazy. It's bananas. A little slow, don't you think? No. Well, if you're running a, for a 340 pounder in high school. I know. I know. You're being sarcastic. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, he was he was good for us. Um, he had 38 tackles, three tackles for a loss, two and a half sacks, nine QB hits, which is pretty good. Just he played 63 percent of the snaps for the year. Now this the beginning of the season it started around 50 percent, and then you got up as high as like you know 80 plus percent. Really, where he was in the meat of the season was around 75 percent of the snaps. So three, yeah. you know, three 70. out of every four plays. So I was on the field, you know, quite a bit. Justin, he did a solid job. Like I said, the Tampa game, I mean, he was a disruptor. Blocked a field goal. Had a tackle for a loss. Had a sack in that game. Was just a beast. And it just seemed like as it went on, you kind of the more you forgot about him. Now, when you had Dalvin, like Dalvin Thomason was definitely benefiting from having him. And you had Leonard Williams. Like Dalvin Thomason seemed to be the beneficiary from that. But every time I would pop on film and watch Lawrence, I would be impressed. It was just there wasn't the flashy plays. I get that he plays at a position. That's not going to have a ton of those. Yeah. But I would like to see Lawrence in year two pop off the screen a little bit more than what he did this year. Yeah, that is that is the thing, that when you're playing as a 3-4 defensive end, it is tough to make the flashy plays because you're trying to fill a gap for our linebackers to make some plays. I think that's kind of like the bread and butter of that system. Uh, but obviously he showed, and you know all of our guys showed at some point one way or another, that they can, that they can make those flash, flashy plays. Um, besides almost almost sack Leonard Williams. Oh, I had to throw that in there. I think that made there was a lot of people happy. too many stalemates at the line of scrimmage for me for Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. Like, even on one-on-one blocks. There was too many times where it just seemed like he was stalemated at the line yeah. of scrimmage. And a guy like him should be getting penetration on every single play. It doesn't mean you're a disruptor on every play, but you should be getting that movement every single play. And we didn't really get that. Um, all the time from Lawrence. Now, like I said, there'd be games where, it, where it did look like that, but I, I wanted to see on a, on a more consistent basis. That being said, he's at a rookie position where it's probably the biggest jump besides QB from, um, you know, college, to the NFL is that O line D line where it's like, okay, you're going from guys who are big and have some athleticism to big athleticism matched with grown man. And so I get that there's a jump there. But year two, there should be a jump for Dexter Lawrence into that grown man bully ball. Uh, uh, or, or, you know, at least eventually. We need to see that bully ball from Dalvin to, or yeah. Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, so some more, a little bit more pass rush numbers. Five QB hurries, five QB knockdowns. We already mentioned the two and a half sacks. Already mentioned the nine QB hits. He had 15 pressures. Now, keep in mind, I'm looking at pro football reference. If you find where he has uh, X amount of pressures from Pro Football Focus, they always overestimate QB pressures as opposed to Pro Football Reference. So keep that in mind. Definitely want to see him get more pressure on the quarterback. I, I'm Bobby. I'm not even a person that's going to say I want to see more sacks out of Dexter Lawrence. I want to see more you don't pressure. Want to see more sacks out of well, Dexter Lawrence. I, I, for me to like fully evaluate his season, if he has one and a half sacks this season, but he puts I want fifteen sacks. Well, it's good for well, you know. My father has a saying: "It's good to want Bobby Skinner." Um, but if if he finished the season with one and a half sacks, but he puts twenty five pressures on the quarterback and he gets over maybe fifteen quarterback hits, I'm saying, hey, this is a really good sneaky season for Dexter Lawrence. And I'm very happy about that. So one of the things that actually 
the big thing that sticks out to me the most, Bobby Skinner, throughout the entire season, sure, maybe he got stalemated every once in a while by, you know, one-on-one solo, you know, just going up against offensive linemen, and he didn't really do much in that regard. But one of the things that one of the things that sticks out, and this is particularly earlier in the season, his pursuit and his motor. There was this one screenplay that he had against the Vikings where Dalvin Cook, it was one of those play-action screens where Kirk Cousins is floating to one sideline. He's floating the ball back to the opposite field where Dalvin Cook is catching a screen. Now, the play is going for a 20-yard gain, but Dexter Lawrence, 342 pounds, <sighs> hustling downfield, chases down Dalvin Cook, makes the play, and it probably would have gone possibly for a touchdown or a safety would have been the last guy defense to make a tackle. So... His pursuit, and you even see it in the run game, and you even see it yeah. sometimes when quarterbacks are holding onto the ball. He doesn't quit. He doesn't stop. So that's something that's good out of Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, he's got good pursuit. When he works stunts, he's very good at that. Um, for a guy as big as him, like that goes with pursuit. He's very good moving vertically across the offensive line. So, you know, those kind of plays, they you know sometimes they're a little longer developing, but he's pretty good at that. Now, here's, here's what I'll ask you, Justin, and maybe we'll finish on this. Rank one, two, three, Dalvin Tomlinson, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence. It's actually funny because my follow-up question to you was going to be, if Dexter Lawrence balls out, would you mind not re-signing Dalvin Tomlinson? So this is actually interesting. So I'll answer this. I got to go. I got to go. Leonard Williams got to number one. Got to go. Dalvin number two. Got to go. Dexter Lawrence number three. And it's not because it's not that I don't like anybody. That's just how I feel. I think Leonard Williams amplified Everybody when he got here, including Dalvin Tomlinson, where Dalvin Tomlinson may have been the better all-around player once Leonard Williams got here. But you have to think, maybe that attention was given to Leonard Williams. His double team rate was probably definitely, oh, I'm saying this and I don't know. Leonard Williams' double team rate may have been slightly higher than Dalvin Tomlinson, but nevertheless, I put uh, Dexter Lawrence at number three. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's where I land, too, um, why well, I have Dalvin ahead of Leonard. But, yeah, Dexter Williams as number three for a guy picked, you know, first, 17th. Um, I hope he moves to that number one role. I really do. I, yeah. I get that you know, it's not even a knock on the other two. I just hope he moves into that number role, disruptor role, to, because I don't think Dalvin Thompson is ever going to be, like, top 10 defensive tackle in the league. And Leonard Williams has kind of shown us who he is at this point of his career. Dexter Lawrence is the one who has that potential – to be like the guy that teams like when they come to face the Giants defense, they'd be like, you better account for Dexter Lawrence in the middle. Like the way that we, when we play the Eagles, we think about Fletcher Cox. I want Dexter Lawrence to kind of have that role and hopefully he grows into it quicker than uh quicker or sooner rather than later. Yeah. And that's actually something from the preseason. I remember talking about this for Dexter Lawrence preseason last year where a lot of fans were saying, well, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And then you kind of break down the tape and I made a video that did somewhat well about, hey, Dexter Lawrence is getting double teamed. And he was getting double teamed. You know, maybe I think they they kind of let the teams let their foot off the gas towards maybe the early part of the season. And that's why maybe he had some of his good plays towards the beginning of the season. Um, probably not, because like we said, Dexter Lawrence's pursuit and his motor, he doesn't give up even if there's multiple guys being thrown his way on a pole or anything like that. So Dexter Lawrence... Teams already recognize him as a force, and he's going to get double teamed, and you may be saying to yourself, well, where is he, where is he, where is he? He's getting doubled, and he's taking up that space. He's eating up that space, and he's doing a good job in that regard. Justin, I have the TV on mute right now, and it's going New York Liberty players to watch. One of them is scoring two points per game on 20% shooting. Why is she a player to watch? One well, it's a three bounce per game. It's a player to watch because it's bad. It's like, watch this player because she's bad. He a nurse. All right. All right. Do you got anything else on Dex? Um, if he does go up to that number one spot, are you okay with saying well, number one spot in terms of the best like defensive tackle, defensive end on this team? Are you okay with letting Dalvin totally walk? I hate watching guys just totally walk. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. Like just letting him go for nothing. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It, it's I'm I can envision being okay with Dalvin Thompson not being on the 2021 Giants roster, but letting him just totally walk. I don't know about that. I mean, maybe maybe we'll have Dalvin locked up before this episode even comes out because there's been talks about that. I thought you were actually talking when you said I hate seeing guys just walk. 
I actually thought that you were being sarcastic by saying, I hate seeing guys just walk, by physically walking. I do. I hate that, too. <laughs> Move your ass. All right, that's an episode. We appreciate you guys. Appreciate you listening to these player profile previews. If you ever, hey, if, if someone's like, what do you think of this player? It's like, here, get 10 minutes. Go listen yep. to Talking Giants. 10 minutes on Dexter Lawrence. What we think about this guy. We'll see you next time. Until then, let's go big blue.